if we were going to trace the origins of UK rap for where it all started, like, where would you say, what's the first joint we should play? I would start with Smiley Culture. Um, I have a police officer or Cockney translation. We should do police officer. Yeah, let's do police officer. So I would start with Smiley Culture, police officer. Um, because I think it was the first MC-based record to go number one. Um, and it was definitely, you know, Smiley was such a huge part of that era. It was probably the only sort of UK dancehall MC to break through into the mainstream in that way. Um, and people forget, it's easy to forget now that Jamaica was as much of an influence on UK MC culture mm. and the Jamaican sound system as American rap music. A friend of mine and fellow content creator DJ Marky Marks shared this video of Akala and DJ Semtex chatting about the origins of UK rap on Instagram the other day. And as soon as I saw it, I was inspired to make a video about the guy that Akala attributes to being one of the originators of UK rap. Smiley culture. Missy, missy, no shelter, no holla. No stand up in the road with a touch and try pull me over. Cause if the dark night myself, you will get run over. No come behind me the rover and start flash your flash. I'll come wreck, 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 wreck it beside me pan your scooter. Now I'm gonna be honest, I didn't realize the significance of Smiley and his music before because I'm 26 and probably a bit ignorant really, but I thought, wow, if I'm going to go about calling myself a UK rap journalist and be taken seriously, I need to educate myself on this stuff and educate myself on the people who started this shit, the originators. And like Akala said, Smiley is one of the first ever UK artists to break into the mainstream with an MC-based record. He was a reggae artist known for his fast chatting on the mic. An MC in style originating from Jamaican dancehall culture that's similar to rap in many ways. But I must stress this next point because I've already had elders in the comments of the vote kicking off at me for calling Smiley a rapper. Smiley was not a rapper, or at least he didn't consider himself a rapper at the time. He was a chatter, a toaster, an MC that was active within dancehall culture, but more on that later. Despite all that, his influence on UK rap and MC culture is undeniable and many today still look upon his death in 2011 during a police raid as one of the most blatant UK police cover-ups of all time. So let's dive right into it now. The life, the legacy and the tragic death of Smiley Culture. Take this time to subscribe if you haven't already and if you have, Big up you, you're a real one. Stay tuned to the end because I'm going to do some current subscriber shout outs and give you some love. You ready to crack on? Right, let's go. Smiley Culture was born David Victor Emmanuel in 1963 in Stockwell, South London. He was the son of a Jamaican father and Guyanese mother, both of which brought music into his life at an early age. Right away, Smiley knew that music was something that he wanted to pursue, and as soon as he could, he got into DJing with many of London's 80s reggae sound systems. Basically groups of DJs, MCs, engineers and artists that were armed with sound equipment and ready to bring the party at the drop of a hat, whether it be at the street or in a club. Smiley spent most of his time with the famous Saxon Studio International System, picking up on the fast chat style from the DJ that pioneered it, Peter King. And when I say DJ, I don't necessarily mean someone stood behind the decks either. A sound system DJ is someone that talked or chatted over beats, also known as a toaster. Someone you might call an MC nowadays. Again, in the UK it was a precursor to rap that inspired a lot of the UK MC sound that was to come in rap, hip hop and grime. Because like Akala said in that earlier interview clip, UK MC culture was as much inspired by Jamaican sound system culture as it was US rap culture. So after making a name for himself in the sound system scene as a top chatter, Smiley got himself signed to Fashion Records a London-based reggae label and one of the only reggae labels that had their own recording studios at the time. Here's a clip from a 1984 interview where Smiley and a few other artists on the fashion label are practicing their chatting skills. England so cool, all me feel a ice breeze More time it coming like it's below not degrees Me have to take cash and we can put in anti-freeze Me don't want to wake up in the morning, try to start it and it sees Gee whiz, just tell me what kind of times are these Ja man, me and go kill you with originality Me now my shots in it at the mic MC Me bridging them and call me human dictionary Man, my voices come from 45 and not from LP, Jano It was through fashion records that Smiley would release his first official single in 1984, Cockney Translation. It was an incredibly influential track that saw Smiley translate East End Cockney dialect to London's version of Jamaican Patois. 
It's such a quality track, and here's a little clip if you haven't heard it before. Cockney have names like Terry Arthur and Del Boy. We have names like Winston, Lloyd and Leroy. We ball out, yo, while Cockney say, oi. What Cockney call a Jack we call a Blue Boy. Say Cockney have mates while we have spar. Say Cockney live in a drum while we live in a yard. Say we get yam while Cockney get captured. Say Cockney say Gabna, we say Big Boat, yeah. In all the Cockney translation, in all the Cockney Translation. Well, here's an interview clip from the mid-80s where Smiley's explaining Cockney translation to a journalist, and you can see just how much personality and charisma this guy's got from this interview. Man himself is here next to me. Unfortunately, we only had uh, we only had a minute of that video. Could you give us some more um, uh, sort of a bit more translation? Cockney say blokes, we say guys. Cockney say all right, we say ites, we say pants. Cockney says right, sweeter than that, just level wives. Jules, you're a gem. <laughs> What a brilliant bloke. Did, where did you, what, what made you still, how did you get that song together? Well, the original idea was to do a split personality style and mm. in writing it, it turned into Cockney Translation. Right. Brilliant, clever stuff. Is it hard to do it and to speak it? Do you get confused? No, well, not sure which one you're going to be. With practice, it came perfect sort of thing. Yeah, brilliant <laughs> Safe. stuff. Enough Personality is your, uh, is your single you're about, about to come out, is that right? Yeah, well, what I'm saying in Enough Personality is Culture Smiley has enough different personality so no matter of which colour, creed or nationality you are, come to me as an entertainer because I've got enough different personality. And when I was young, my mother couldn't find no remedy because every time I talk, I do it as a different somebody. Sometimes I speak like an English man, another time like a yardie. Hey man, I'm like a Yankee and you're ready now about a Cockney. Looking back on Cockney Translation many years after the release, a lot of journalists argued that it was the signifier of the creation of a new hybrid accent where white East Londoners would adopt words and phrases of black origin. And obviously this is something that's the norm today across the UK. Apparently the song's lyrics were also used in schools as an example of how immigration has affected the English language. Like the youths of today, you understand me? Right? The youths of today, you, I mean, like saying between the black and whites, um, you find that a lot of them are close together now and you find a lot of coloured children speaking Cockney anyway. Um, apart from only the youths, there's a, a lot of elders as well who's into that as well. So, I mean, that is the main reason I did it, to, you know, bring it closer together. You understand me? I mean, knowing the two slangs myself as slangs and not languages, you understand me? I just brought them together. Despite its obvious historical impact now, when it was released in 1984, Cockney Translation didn't have a mega impact on the charts. It wasn't until Smiley released his follow-up single, Police Officer, that same year, that he would actually get some mainstream success. On the surface, it was another track made with Smiley's usual signature humour. But when you look closer, the track tackles the serious subject matter of how the British police unfairly treat black people in the 1980s, and obviously that's still relevant right now. The track is an apparently true story about how Smiley was arrested for smoking weed, but after the police officer found out that he was a famous reggae musician, they wanted his autograph. <laughs> Despite the track's anti-establishment and drug endorsing lyrics, in the 1980s radio bosses simply didn't understand terms like ganja and sinsa miller, so they played it out again and again. It quickly became a top 20 hit, selling 40,000 copies in total. After this, Smiley re-released Cockney Translation to more acclaim, before signing with major label Polydor in 1986. With the backing of Polydor behind him, Smiley released his debut album, Tongue in Cheek, in 1986, but it didn't have the same commercial success as his previous two singles. And after another album, the original Smiley Culture, was released in the same year independently, Smiley started to slowly fade out of musical relevancy, appearing in a couple of TV shows and ads before releasing his final single, Can't Stop the Rap, in 1990. Body poppers and 
See, look at that man. He was a rapper after all. The last track in his career, he was rapping. And you sensitive old heads had the nerve to kick off at me for calling him one of the UK's first rappers. But no, you're right, I'm kidding. He wasn't one of the UK's first rappers. He was originator of a style. And the stuff he was putting out in the 1990s isn't something that's looked back on fondly. And to be honest, it was more like Smiley moving away from his reggae roots and kind of looking to, by the looks of it, parody US hip hop style or move his sound to what was popular at the time. And it just didn't work for him. It looked a bit cheesy and it looked a bit, yeah, a bit like a US parody. Smiley then stayed largely out of the public eye for the next 20 years of his life. That was until 2010, when newspapers caught wind of him being arrested at the age of 47, charged with the conspiracy to supply cocaine. His trial for that was due to begin on the 21st of March 2011, but he would never make it to this trial date. On the 15th of March 2011, four police officers searched Smiley's home in Surrey with a warrant relating to the import of Class A drugs into the UK. It was during this search of his home that Smiley would lose his life. The official report states that Smiley's death was suicide and that he died from a single stab wound to the heart. Let me just repeat that there. The official final report is that Smiley stabbed himself through the heart. Of course, many didn't believe this and still don't. So they took to the streets in protest. If you said to us that he accidentally fell on the knife, we might, have, we might have swallowed that. But to tell us that he killed himself, he stabbed himself, don't insult our intelligence. Further research after the fact suggests that Smiley's death was another factor that contributed to the 2011 riots in the UK following the shooting of Mark Duggan. Despite there being an investigation from the Independent Police Complaints Commission concluding that it was suicide and that none of the officers involved committed any crimes, many people are still at odds with this story today. They just don't believe that that Smiley would have stabbed himself in the heart. What's more, the IPCC didn't even release the full report to Smiley's family or the public. There's so much more to be said about this part of Smiley's story, but I can't cover it all in this video. I simply wouldn't have time. But despite it being a big miscarriage of justice in many people's eyes, the death of Smiley culture opened a wider discussion about the deaths of black people in police custody in the UK. And resulting from that, many articles have been written, many books have been written, and a lot of research has been done into the misgivings of the police and the failings of the police in the UK. I highly recommend you read further into this, read about Smiley's death and what resulted from it. Um, I read a great book earlier this year by Lee Lawrence called The Louder I Will Sing. Uh, it's not about Smiley's case, of course, but it's about how Lee's mum got shot whilst the police were raiding his house and his mum eventually died from those injuries and Lee fought his case, fought against the police and eventually came out with some sort of justice for his mum. Uh, so I'd, I'd highly recommend reading that if you're interested in learning more about um, this, these issues in the UK and the issues that, that the police and black people have and, and racism in the police force in the UK. Highly recommend reading that. Despite his tragic death, the memory and legacy of Smiley has lived on and his impact on UK music is still brought up time and time again today. Legends like Roots Maneuver have called him a Brit rap pioneer in the past and even in 2020, that video that inspired me to make this one, a Carla saying that Smiley is an artist that must be mentioned when discussing the origins of UK rap. Simply put, Smiley Culture was a pioneer who should never and will never be forgotten. Thank you all for watching and thank you all for sticking around to the end. You guys are the real heroes, the real MVPs. Uh, I made this video to educate myself as much as anything else because as soon as I saw Carla speak on Smiley, I wanted to find out more and I thought the best way to do it would be researching to then put it into a video. Uh, if you were around during Smiley's heyday, if you're an OG and you maybe even met Smiley, saw him live or, or went out and bought his records when those singles dropped, let me know in the comments, let me know any stories you've got about Smiley and also I apologise if I've described anything wrong or you think that some of the stuff I've said isn't quite accurate. I've tried my best to do my research into smiley and dancehall culture and, you know, reggae culture and things like that. If I've got anything wrong, I do apologize. It's all came straight from the heart. Um, if you're not subscribed already, hit subscribe. 
And if you are subscribed, I appreciate it. Don't think I don't see all your comments and all your support. Um, there's some of you that comment on every video and it's just amazing. I'm going to put some of them up here and give you shout outs because I want to start appreciating the guys that have been here from day dot. You know, the guys that have built us up from nothing. So thank you all. Thank you all for commenting all the time. I always notice and I do try to reply as and when I can. If you want to join these guys, if you want to join the Rider Dies, hit subscribe now. It means so much to me. Uh, if you want to see what I do when I'm not in front of this camera babbling shit, follow me on Instagram there. And if you want to support the channel more, jump on Patreon. We give away signed UK rap merch monthly and it's just a good way to say thanks for, you know, making the videos or whatever. If you enjoy it, go there. Um, and until next time, why don't you watch one of these other videos? It's, it's some good stuff. Some good stuff. Hawaii, pick one. I, I can't sit here forever, Hawaii. Go, go. That one? Try that one. In a bit.